All right, guys, we're going to give this a shot without uh, the little webcam view thing in the uh, in the bottom corner. Um, so maybe you can see more of the screen. All right, but uh, here we go with uh, colors and markings. So these are going to be some of your basic poke colors. Uh, we're going to talk about them a lot more in depth when we get to uh, genetics. Uh, but this is just a good sort of general survey of different poke colors of the horse. All right, so we're going to start out with black. Bay, uh, with, which is a uh, body color ranging from tan to red to reddish brown with a mane and tail uh, with black points. Uh, the points uh, constitute the uh, legs, the tips of the ears, uh, and the face. Dark bay. Seal brown, uh, which is going to be very similar to dark bay. Um, a lot of times in judging, if you've got two dark bays and you can't distinguish between the two, call one a dark bay, call the other a seal brown. But like I said, kind of the same. Uh, you have brown, um, you also call this kind of horse a liver. You have chestnut, uh, body color dark red or brownish red, mane and tail usually dark red or brownish red, uh, but may also be flaxen. All right, let's sorrel. All right, so what's the difference? Not much. But if we're getting specific, stock horses are typically sorrel. Saddle type horses are chestnut, as well as thoroughbreds and other hunter type horses. We're going to be referred to as chestnut as opposed to sorrel. But, like I said about the uh, seal brown dark bay, if you got two horses of the same color in a class, regardless of what it is, call one of them a chestnut, one of them a sorrel. It really doesn't make a difference. All right, we have the white horse. So more semantics. A true white horse is born white and remains white throughout its life. A white horse has snow white hair, pink skin, and brown, hazel, or blue eyes. And not to be confused with gray horses. A gray horse has a, uh, any horse with a mixture of white with any colored hairs, often born a solid color solid colored or nearly solid colored and they get lighter with age or uh, more white hairs appear with age which is also not the same as roan for red roan is more a more or less uniform mixture of white hairs with red hairs on the body but usually darker on the head and lower legs and can have red or flaxen mane or tail. A blue roan is a more or less uniform mixture of white with black hairs on the body, but usually darker on the head and lower legs. A bay roan is going to be the same thing, but with a base coat of bay. Right, now I have a buckskin, body color yellowish or gold with a mane and tail black with black points. Now this horse has no dorsal stripe. Okay? So not to be confused with Gun. Uh, who has a body color yellowish or golden mane and tail black and usually has a dorsal stripe which if it's a Dun it's always going to have a dorsal stripe. A uh, zebra stripes on the legs which you can kind of see here and here on this individual. Uh, uh, transverse stripes on the withers, which you can also see. Um, and cobwebbing on the forehead, which he doesn't have so much of. 
for y'all to have the red done, which is a form of done with body color yellowish or beige or slightly red in color. Uh, mane and tail and dorsal stripe are red. Also, usually have the same zebra striping uh, transverse mark on the withers and cobwebbing on the forehead. Our gruel up, body color is smoky or mousy colored. Um, not a mixture of black and white hairs, but each uh, hair, hair mouse colored. Mane and tail black, usually black on lower legs with dorsal stripe, transvert mark on withers, zebra stripes on legs, and cobwebbing on the forehead. Um, this particular individual, not real prominent. Zebra stripes on the leg, certainly a strong dorsal stripe and a transverse stripe on the withers with not so much cobwebbing. All right, Palomino, body color yellow, uh, mane and tail flaxen or white. A Cromello, how would we will talk about how one uh, gets a Cromello, also again in the genetics uh, chapter. A perlino, like that. More on coat colors later in the genetics chapter. All right, so some Appaloosa coat patterns that uh, you need to be aware of. Um, there are millions and different variations on Appaloosa coat patterns, but some specific ones that you should be familiar with. Obviously, a blanket uh, with just sort of white and spots over the the hind quarters. And then the snowflake, which is a solid color horse um, with uh, white spots over the body. And then the leopard, which is a would be a horse with a white base coat with dark colors all over the body, usually with a dark colored face. All right, some paint coat patterns. These do get a little bit more specific, but you can also have many different variations. All right, so in the very basic sense, a black and white horse like this is considered piebald. A, a brown and white horse is skewbald. So this one may be a tiny bit bay, but anyway, brown and white, chestnut, sorrel, whatever is skewbald. All right, so. The Pobiano usually have head markings like a solid colored horse. Legs may be white and body are often regular. Uh, and body, I guess, body markings are often regular and distinct, being oval or round patterns. The Overo often have a bald face, at least one dark colored leg. And body markings are usually irregular, scattered, or splashy white. Uh, these markings do not cross the back. Um, it's a good way to, good way to remember that. Um, so Tobiano is kind of a white horse with colored spots, and Overo is a colored horse with white spots. Overo is sort of a combination of two. Um, let's say you're going to have more white uh, than colored spots, um, but the sort of, for lack of a better word, the, the dynamic is different. Um, then a Sabino, you're going to have um, an Overo horse uh, who's going to have uh, roaned out edges to their white markings. Then a splashed white, you see this sort of has white which sort of comes up from the legs and the belly and into the neck and then it's dark colored on top and then a medicine hat um medicine hat can occur in in any coat pattern um it doesn't have to be all white like this uh with just a little on the top of the head but the the purpose the point of the medicine hat is that it's um color which is confined confined exclusively to the ears He's wearing a hat. 
All right, face mark. All right, go blaze. A snip. A star. You have a bald face. So uh, a bald face becomes a bald face instead of a blaze when it um, passes over the eyes. And that's sort of the full width of the face. And then you have the combo of a star, stripe, and snip. Um, so this is kind of a subjective thing. So you can have combinations of all of them. Um, a blaze is going to be a little wider than a stripe. And sort of in, in this instance, you have a, a, a thick part at the top, which is the star, a thick part at the bottom, which is the snip, and it's sort of a thin white marking down the nose, um, which constitutes the stripe. All right, and leg markings. Obviously, none. Um, then you have the coronet and the pastern going slightly up the leg. Um, coronet just on the coronet band, pastern. Um, encompassing everything below the fetlock. Partial coronet, which is not real clear, but it's just going to be just a little snidge away. Partial fetlock is just going to be, as it's described, partially up the fetlock. A fetlock covers the pastern and fully encompasses the fetlock. A sock is going to be uh, over the fetlock and midway up the cannon. A stocking is going to be uh, over the fetlock and the full way up the cannon, but not over the knee. Um, once you get over the knee, you're getting into sort of paint horse territory, um, being classified as a paint or a pinto. Um, you see a stocking on the back leg is going to be below the, the, the hock. Um, and then this last one is going to go well up into the gas. So there you have colors and markings of the horse.